Now, you've been waiting a long time for this, for the men, okay? Men, get out. Come on, ladies, sit back and rest. Um, men, basically, I will tell you, there are a lot of passages in the Bible, but God calls you to be your wife's leader and your wife's lover. That means you must be your wife's servant, that you must spend much time with her, that you must give her useful scriptural and practical instruction. You must be a good example to her. You must make decisions and delegate responsibilities in your home. And you're not only a leader, you're to be a loving leader. And that's everything I'm going to say. But let me give you the references and go through them one at a time. Okay? Number one, uh, how can we as husbands love our wives with Christ's love? Here are a few ideas. Number one, you need to have a priority of humility. We were not born humble. It's a choice. Clothe yourself with humility, men. And, and here's a reference, several. I'll give you John 13, 1 through 15. Uh, because a husband who believes his primary ministry is marriage will be like Jesus. Wait a minute. That's the calling. Husbands, love your wives as Gary Smalley in the languages of love? No. As uh, whoever runs the um, marriage enrichment seminar that goes down here? No. Dennis Rainey? No, don't love him as Dennis Rainey. Don't love him as Bill Gothard. Don't love him. Love them as Christ loved. See, our standard as men is we're supposed to love our wives with the love of Jesus. And what was Jesus' love? Well, John 13, 1 through 15, gives us the picture of what it means to be a leader. In this passage, the emblem of leadership is not a throne, not a club, not... Anything less than a big towel and a basin of water. Humble. Jesus, while all the men had puffed up heads and stinky feet, takes off his outer garment, girds a towel around himself, and takes the place of the lowest slave. That's love of Jesus. That's humble. Jesus gave us the example. If we have a servant's heart, we will act like a servant and we will react like a servant when we're treated like a servant. You know what a servant's heart means? You act that way, and if you're treated like a servant, you react as if you're a servant. You go, "Uh uh-huh, I am. And we have that humility in our lives. Lots of verses. Uh, Spiritual leaders, 1 Peter 5, 3, we're not lords. Uh, lording over those entrusted to us, but we're humble examples to them. Number one, the priority of humility is premier if you believe your primary ministry is marriage. Number two, the priority of servanthood. A husband who believes his primary ministry is marriage will be the family's biggest servant. I can't believe it. Do you know how many comments I get when I talk? I don't realize how many stories I tell until I listen to people. They just come out. I don't plan them. If you read my notes, the stories aren't in there. They happen as I think and as I talk. And I guess I said somewhere that I was folding the laundry. Someone came up to me and said, you fold the laundry? You know, and I guess another time I said something about that. And and, and it, it strikes me amazingly that if the husband is to be the biggest servant of the family, how can they not change diapers? How can they not help with the laundry and with the dishes and with everything else there is in that house? If you're the biggest servant, you ought to be involved in everything. That, how do you think the children learn to do it? They don't. To go do that. It doesn't work that way. They, they start following you and say, Daddy, can I help you with that? I mean, do you know one of the biggest questions I hear at my house? Can I help you with it? What can I do? Did you know, you know how many times they came up to me because I worked you know, later this afternoon because I wasn't done until you know, about 5.30 today. And so when I usually play with them, they kept coming up trying to help me so I could play with them. And I say, yeah, why don't you go pick up sticks in the yard? Okay, they came back half hour later. We did that. So why don't you sweep the driveway off? They came back 10 minutes later. We did that. And he says, okay, why don't you? You know, the most frequent question is how can we help? Where do you think they get that? If you have a priority of servanthood, it, it, Jesus said, if you want to, to be the greatest, be the servant of all. And, and when, whatever Jesus did, he did for our sakes. By the way, what does a servant look like? A servant stays close to those he serves. Jesus did not lead the disciples uh, you know, with conference calls. He didn't fax them. He didn't page them. You know, he didn't email them. He spent time with them. And a servant stays close to those he serves. A servant clearly explains what he's doing to those he serves. Can you imagine if your waiter or waitress at the, at the restaurant didn't talk to you? How would you get your meal? See, a servant communicates. 
And if you're a servant, you've got to be communicating with your family. Men don't like to talk. We talk all day long. I mean, all of us, if you're in any kind of, any kind of, of, of management, you talk all the time. And so I don't like to talk when I come home. A servant has to communicate clearly. We have to. We just, it's our priority, our marriage. Uh, a servant clearly lives an example before those he serves, and a servant clearly does his job. And by the way, what I just described is Christ's ministry. I studied how Christ served the disciples because I want to know how I'm supposed to serve my family. Because Jesus said, I'm supposed to love Bonnie like Jesus loved me. And to know how Jesus loved me, other than you know John 3.16, I had to look at how he treated the disciples. Amazing study. 